Hey guys, it's Zach. Hey, it's me here again. And this is our fifth tutorial, and we're going to do diamonds and doors. And the agenda, uh, we're going to show you what's going to look like at the end of this tutorial. Then we're going to create a door. We're going to make the doors impassable. Then we're going to create a diamond object. Then we're going to make it so that the diamonds, they disappear when you collect them. And then lastly, when you collect all the diamonds in a level, we want the door to disappear. So let's show what this game looks like. All right, so the game starts up, and uh, things look a bit different, right? There are these diamond objects, and then there's this red wall over there just before the goal, and that's a door. And so if I, well, I just hit a diamond, it disappeared. But I can't pass this door. But there's still diamonds on the screen, so I'm going to go and collect them. So two over there. And poof, the door disappears, and I can get the goal. Same thing happens in the second level if I collect all the diamonds the door disappears. So this gives us a bit of a challenge. Um, it's kind of, you know, what is the player doing? Well, the player has to collect diamonds in order to get to the goal. And we're done. So we showed you what it looks like, so we can cross that off the list. We want to go back to where we ended the uh, last tutorial. And the first thing we want to do is create a door. So remember, we create a sprite first. Right click, create sprite, SPR underscore door. And we want to look like this red thing. Remember to unclick precise collision checking. Click OK. Now we're going to make the door object. Right click, create object, OBJ, underscore door. And we're going to make it look like the door sprite. And click check solid. And uh, so one thing that we want to do with the doors is, if you notice, they're basically exactly like walls, right? I mean, they just block the player. Uh, the only difference is they go away when diamonds have been collected. Uh, but they're basically like walls. Is there any way that we can kind of tell Game Maker, hey, this object is, is the same thing as a wall? Yeah, you see this parent thing right here? So we click here, and we see object wall. So the setting the parent as the wall means that it's going to have all the same things as a wall. So just like the wall, when the player hits the wall, the player stops, the same thing's going to happen with the door. Right. So then I guess this events and actions window here, are these just additional events and additional actions that it will have on top of what the wall already has? Exactly. So it has all the things of the wall plus all the things that you give it in these events and actions. Cool. But I guess for right now we just want it to be the same. So let's click OK. So we created our door. And then by setting the wall as its parent, we made it impassable. And let's go to our room, first room. And let's add our door right in front of the goal. And in our second room, let's add a door right here, too. And let's run this game, make sure that we can't go through the door. So I'm going up, see the door right over there. And it behaves exactly like a wall. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way for me to pass it right now. Right, so as you saw at the beginning of this tutorial, we made diamonds that we collected to make it disappear. So let's create a diamond. Right click on sprites, create sprite, SPR underscore diamond, load sprite, diamond, uncheck precise collision checking, click OK. Let's make a diamond object. Right click, create object, OBJ diamond and let's make it look like a diamond so we've made our diamonds we can check that off the list and we want our diamonds to disappear on when they're collected and the way we collect them is you just run into them so we're going to do our collision event add event collision with the player and we're going to go to main one you see this objects and then you see this recycle bin, it says destroy instance, we're going to drag it in. And what that does, it just destroys the instance of the diamond. So let's put some diamonds in our levels. And we just made our diamonds disappear on collection, so we can mark that off. And now back to putting them in the level. Uh, let's put some, so the player will collect them. And let's put them in the second level, too. 
Let's make them go throughout most of the maze. And let's test our game and make sure that when we click when we run into the diamonds they disappear. Two to the right, and you can see the diamonds just go away. Uh, they still haven't unlocked the door though. Right, we haven't told it to do that, and as we said, we have to tell the game to do everything. So let's go back to and edit our door. So we double click on our object door, and we're going to add a new event, and we're going to choose what's called a step event. And the step event is what happens every frame. So you can imagine a frame as a single image on a flip book when you're flipping through a book. Each single image is one frame, but when you play it all together, it looks like it's moving. It's exactly what Game Maker is doing. So every time you go to a new image in your flipbook, that's when step event is triggered. Um, so Game Maker has a default of 30 steps per second, which means that you know every single second that's going by, there are 30 steps that are occurring, and every single step can have an action. So in this case, uh, we want to check are there any diamonds left? Right. So the way we're, we're going to do that is we're going to go to this control tab. You see this one, two, three with a blue. It's called test instant, instance count. So let's drag it in. And we want our object to be diamond. And we want it to be equal to zero. So that says if the number of instances of diamonds is zero, we want to do something. And when the number of diamonds is zero, that means that we collect them all. What we want to do is make it disappear. So just like we made the diamonds disappear, we go back to the main one tab. You see this recycle bin under objects, and we're going to drag it in. We're going to destroy itself. So now we should have made the door disappear when all diamonds are collected. And let's run our game and see if we can do it. I'm going to go ahead and collect the diamonds, and the door disappears. I can go collect the gold to the next level. If I want it to be sneaky, I can move around and ignore the door. But I'm going to go ahead this way, collect all the diamonds, and the door goes away, and we're done. Great. So that concludes our fifth tutorial. So create some cool levels, put some diamonds in some cool places, and make sure the door only disappears when the diamond all diamonds are collected. Always remember to save your work. Ask your teachers when you have any questions. Have some fun making games.